Tonight on Chim Stock Africa, my guest needs no introduction. Zayn Mez has been a constant face on TV and films in South Africa for over three decades. Tonight in this interview, Zayn shares with me his journey over the decades with Christ before the camera as well as his life behind the camera and the heart he has for fatherhood in society. Tonight on Chim Stock Africa. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think and don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody. From Cape Town to Cairo and from Mogadishu to Dakar, this is Chim's Talk Africa. Hi there, welcome to this segment of your show. Like I said in the beginning, my guest today is none other than someone who doesn't really need an, in, an introduction. Zayn Mers is a popular actor here in South Africa. He's also a film producer and uh, as well as the CEO of the Fatherhood Foundation. Zayn, you're welcome to the show. I thank you for having me, Chen. It's great to be here. <laughs> it's great to finally have you and uh, yeah. God made this possible. Zayn, Many people watching you, you've, mm. you've been in their sitting room over the years. Oh. Uh, like one of our cameraman said, yeah. I know that face. <laughs> <laughs> you've made them think, yes. you've made them laugh, you've made them, you know, emotions up and down. Yeah. But some of them don't know something of what profoundly changed your life and marked your life, your encounter with Christ. Can you tell us how you met Jesus? Yes, 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 yes. Listen, I've been in this industry for nearly 40 years now. Um, just on 30 odd years, so it's been long. But the basis of everything that I do, obviously, is my faith. And I had a beautiful, I gave my heart to the Lord twice. I think I'm the, <laughs> I think, I think I'm the only person ever to have done that. Um, I was at a church, Rehma, Rehma Church, okay. one of our big churches yeah. here in South yeah. Africa. And there was a guy who came to preach here by the name of Tim Story. Okay. And he preached the message, your miracle is in motion. Okay. And, um, I sat, I wasn't even in the main auditorium, I was in the overflow room. And I felt that day as if he was preaching just for me. I, I had just come out of a very heavy relationship. And I did the altar call right there. And he, mm. and he, because he was saying your miracle. And you the, stepped out. The, 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 the message impacted me so much that I wrote a play called Your Miracle is in Motion. Wow. Miracle. I wrote a song called Miracle in Motion. Wow. Wow. And we toured South Africa with the play in communities. We used to do this play. Um, and, and we used the music of Carmen. Mm. Carmen and commissioned and yeah. those kind of, we put their music in this play. And then Carmen came to South Africa a few mm. years later when I met my wife. And he came and he came and he did a, a show at the uh, open air show. You know, he does all his shows are free. Mm. And um, he sang a song, This Blood Is For You. Yeah. Oh. And then immediately after that, he did an altar call. And that song affected me so much. I went up again for the altar <laughs> So I've given my heart to the Lord to us. And that was 30 years ago. And, and so I think I'm one of the few people who gave the heart to the Lord twice. But I grew up in faith, you know. My father was Anglican, my mother was Catholic. We all went to Catholic church growing up. We did catechism and our first communion and all of that. But the things changed when, um, as you grow up, you know, the Bible says you go from, from the milk to the meat. And I always felt that there was more for me out there, you know, more. And, and I used to, I, I started at Varsity when I went to university. Mm. We had, a, we had a, a Bible group on a Wednesday mm. where we would dissect the word, we'd go mm. through the word. And so my understanding of God and Jesus and his salvation changed from the Catholic version to something that was very Pentecostal, mm. very the Holy Spirit coming mm. upon us, you know. And so that changed for me. Yeah, and, and with this foundation, yes. you took all of this into the platform well, God, God has given you. Well, God spoke to me. Yeah, okay. I turned 40. Mm. So, so about 12 years after I gave my heart to the Lord, and as I turned 40, mm. God commissioned me. Mm. You know, 40 is a very, mm. a very important number yeah, publicly. Yeah. So when I turned 40, God said to me, Zayn, I need you to speak to men. Mm. So I started speaking about, mm. I started a men's ministry in my church. Mm. I just didn't have a men's ministry. Mm. And then when I started going to speak at events as a celebrity, mm -hmm. I noticed there were more women and children. 
than, than men. men. Okay. And also three of my sisters mm. are single mothers. Oh. So I wondered, where are the men? Mm. What's happening? And that's when God gave me the specific commission to speak on fatherhood. Tell us, a bit, of, tell, tell us a bit about Fatherhood Foundation, which yes. has been a passion and a ministry for you for a long while. So it started with that, that call yes. at the age of 40. Yes. Uh, what was the vision that got born out of it? What were you desiring and you still desire to do through it? Well, God gives you a passion for a mm. thing. That's how he mm. sometimes mm. called you. You mm. know, I saw what my sisters were going through. Mm. I saw what society looked like. When I did prison ministries, I saw the prisons were full of young men. And the question I always ask them, why are you here? And they go, well, we don't have role models. We don't have mentors. Mm. I grew up without a father. I grew up without... And that was the issue. God said, this is what I want mm. you to talk about. And so it became, it's, I always say, acting is my career. Okay. But fatherhood is my calling. You know, so you can have a career and a calling, yeah. and everybody's called yeah. like that. You know, yeah. you, 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 God gives you a talent yeah. and to you earn it. money, mm -hmm. and then you are called to change this mm. world for His kingdom. Wow! Or and, it, people... and it's been like seventeen years since you've been doing it's this. It's been now. eighteen years. Eighteen now. years. Now this year, twenty twenty four, will be eighteen years. What are some testimonies you've seen in the lives of men? I mean, if there's some stories that come to mind of one or two men that you know, this is what happened to them as a result of Fatherhood Foundation. I've seen relationships mm -hmm. mended. I've seen bridges mended. I've seen people. Uh, I, I was once in a, in a, we were out in the bush camping with some men. And this young man was crying the whole weekend as I was speaking. I noticed he came up for every altar call mm -hmm. we did. And he always cried. He even cried while we were ministering. Mm -hmm. And he would come and say that the words that I'm speaking, he'd never heard from a man before. Mm -hmm. His vision of fatherhood and manhood was totally separate. He used to watch his father, who was a second Dan karate mm. expert, hit his mother mm. on a daily basis. Mm. And because the father was a karate expert, mm. he would hit the mother where he knew it would hurt them. <sighs> and he, this young man tried to stand up to his father, but his father used to beat him. Mm. So much so that he, can't, he couldn't have a, a relationship with men in authority. Mm. He couldn't hold a job. Mm. He couldn't be in church. Because the men of authority he always thought they would abuse that authority. Mm. And when I had spoken to him how God wants men to be and how fatherhood mm. comes from the very heart of God, mm. he cried that all week. He said, never heard anything like that. Mm. The scripture I always use, Jim, mm. is out of the book of Malachi, yeah. the last book in the Old Testament, that says that God will send a prophet, and it's not one person, it's people who carry mm. the spirit of Elijah. He says, I will send you the prophet Elijah before the coming day of the mm. Lord. And he will turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children mm. and the family. Then the hearts of the children and the family will turn to the fathers. Mm. Or else, God says, I will strike the land with a curse. Mm. If you look at South Africa mm. and society today, everybody comes to South Africa. Everybody sees it as the lighthouse mm. of Africa, mm. the jewel of the continent. Mm. But when they come here, they see, oh, this place has just as many problems as other countries. And our biggest problem is society, our family unit is broken. Men are out of place. Men are gone. And so the breach is broken. There's a gap. And so the enemy comes in and he steals the young men and the young women. And it leaves the women defenseless. Women now have to play two roles. They've got to play mommy and daddy. And God didn't design women to be two roles. He designed it to be the helper. Not to be the leader mm. and the strong one in the house, the helpmate, mm. equal to men, but the helpmate. Mm. And unfortunately today in South Africa, mm. two thirds of our homes in South Africa mm. are single parent homes. What do, you, what do you think is the root of it? Because this is not just in South Africa. No. Even those watching in other countries would attest yes. that it's everywhere. What do you think this, what affects men so much that it makes them, you know, just circle, just keep going yes. on? Well, Did you have a father? I had a father. Okay, so that and you know the funny thing is, you. my dad died when I was fourteen. Okay, so he left just early. as I was becoming a man. Yeah, okay. I needed him, and he passed away. So I think also maybe that was my. But luckily, I had good role models. Okay. I had good mentors. Mm -hmm. I had good father figures. And fatherhood, I want to say this: fatherhood is not biological. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be biological fathers. It can be your brother. It can be your uncle. It can be the school teacher, the rugby coach, the soccer coach. Mm -hmm. Someone who's a good, strong male role model mm. that teaches you good values, positive mm. values, because huh, 
Boys will join gangs too, mm. because they don't belong to a gang called family, mm. led by a leader called mm. father. Mm. That's why they go to gangs. They want to belong. And fathers are made to make us feel like we belong to something. Mm. They give us our identity. Mm. Identity is not who you are. Mm. This is a whole message I preach. Mm. Identity is not your name. It's not what you do. It's whose you are. Mm. It's not who you are. Mm. Whose are you? Mm. Where do you come from? Mm. In African culture, we understand ancestry. Mm. You know, some, some religions even mm. venerate our ancestors. Yeah, we far, pray too. to our ancestors, yeah, yeah. the Amadrozi and all of that. So we understand ancestry. Now, if you don't even understand, know who your father is and who is his father and so on and so on, you don't really know who you are. Mm. You'll never know who you are mm. because fathers give us, if you look in the Bible, the book of Matthew, after God speaks these words that the hearts of the father must mm. turn, the very next page when you turn is the book of the Matthew. Genealogy. It gives the genealogy. Mm. This one well, gave, gave birth to this one and this one and this one and then it end Jesus. You know, So there's a lineage. Mm. You must know whose you are before you know mm. who you are. Mm. And fathers give mm. us that. And too many young boys grow up today, and young girls, mm. not knowing whose they are. If you're speaking to somebody who is listening to this and saying, mm. Zen, you're speaking to me, mm. uh, maybe then two ends. So you speak to two different people. It's the person looking for a father figure, yeah. and it's the man who finds himself, who has failed. Yeah. Yeah, he's hearing you. Give a message to each of them before we now look at your journey through the acting mm. career? Well, you know, for me, it's very easy, not easy. It's, 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 it's never too late to build a bridge. Fathers who have failed, fathers who have neglected their children, you know, because sometimes we make kids with one woman, then we marry another woman. And then that child, the mother's always saying, that's your father. And that child grows up mm. with her. Why, why am I not good enough? Mm. Children always blame themselves when it mm. comes to divorce or um, neglect or abandonment, children blame themselves. They go, I wasn't good enough to be loved. And that's never the truth. It's never the truth. So I want to say to those men, it's never too late to go back. Never, never too late. We serve a God of a second chance, Jim. Mm. If he can give us 70 chances times seven in one day, mm. you know, how much more is it? So we can go back and fix things. Mm. We can go back and ask for forgiveness, which is an important thing. We can go back and build the bridge of connection. Mm. We can do that. It's never too late, mm. you know. And then for young people going, I grew up without my father. What kind of dad must I be? Mm. Become the father that you wanted mm. when you grew up. Become When you have your own children, give them what you never had. Mm. So if your father never said, I love you, mm. tell your children like I do every day. Tell my kids, daddy loves you. We grew up where fathers didn't say I love you. Mm. It was not fathers cultural, were, it was was not culturally. Mm. Yeah, you say, Dad, how are you doing? He goes, mm. <laughs> you know, he never said, he never showed emotion. He ate his food. That's a man. Uh, hey, hey, That's a man. Quiet, yeah. He thought that was being a man. We never heard the words, I'm proud of you and I love you. We never heard those things. You know, so I change it. I tell my kids every day. Every day. Daddy, I lo Daddy loves mm. you. That he loves you and I'm proud of you. You know, boys and girls want to hear two things. Mm. They want to hear a lot of stuff. Mm. But girls want to hear, you're beautiful mm. and I love you. Those are the first times mm. you must hear those words. Yeah. Must come out of a father's mm. mouth. You're beautiful mm. and I love you. And boys want to hear, I'm proud of you and you've got it. Mm. He doesn't know what he's got. <laughs> he must just know he's got it. <laughs> you know, I can't you know, figure it out. <laughs> my father says I've got I'm it. Really I don't so know what it is yet, but I have it. <laughs> and I think I think that's what miss, that's what's missing in 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 our young people. Yes, I, I, and and, and Zane is uh, available. He goes around teaching in different mm. countries around South Africa. So the the, the information will be on the screen. Uh, this is uh, this is something like you see the way he pounced on it. This is something very close to his heart. Yes. And I'm sure you could spend the whole day expanding and unpacking yeah. this. Zen will be happy to come into your churches, into your uh, meetings, even into corporate yes, settings. Absolutely. Because this, this thing you're talking about is not just a Christian thing. You know? no, it's, no. It's, it's a question even the society is asking. It's a societal. Yeah, I, I, yes. watch, I watch and I listen to the news over and over again. Mm. It's coming out that the 
scientists and research has proven that lack of fatherhood is really at the root of many societal problems. Yes. Zin, let's talk about your journey in the mm. acting world. You started acting at what age? You say you've been there for almost huh? 40 years now, yeah. 30 something years. <laughs> many people will tell you I was the class clown <laughs> at Jimmy <German> School. <laughs> right from school. <laughs> I was the one making your, jokes. Your fellow mates, your, uh, your colleagues didn't know you were practicing with them. Exactly, <laughs> you know. I was always the one, Zane, come sit in front. <laughs> <It was laughs> the teacher calling you to, yes, to, to watch you. Yeah, you know, and then in, in high school, we did a play and I won an award for the play. A regional, we went and played against other schools. Wow. And I won an award. And back then, um, it was still during apartheid, mm. we played against other white schools. Yeah. And I won an award for that. So, so, and then my teacher said, it's something you should, you should consider doing. A teacher, not my mother, not my sisters. A teacher who should rather tell you to study. <laughs> You should do acting. They saw it in you. Yes. And you know, it's, thank God for that teacher that she saw that. She then helped me to get into university. She said, well, this is a choice. And she introduced me to a lecturer. And, and he said, no, you've got talent. Come, come and do So did you study acting? I studied at which university? Acting. Drama. Drama. Yes. Yeah. Learned about drama, Shakespeare, oh, all of those okay. kind of things. Film, all of that kind of stuff, you know. And, um, and during my third year of study, I got my first professional role, which toured overseas, wow. which traveled. And when I came back from that, I got my first television role. Mm. <laughs> that was a was theater that? play. W which television role was that? Uh, it was a TV series called The Game. Okay. It was a rugby soap. Okay. And, um, you know, rugby's big in South Africa. Yeah, very, very So big. it was the number one show in South Africa. And so that's where my fame began. <laughs> <laughs> that people knew me from this like, TV series called The Game. And, uh, and then after that, I got into soapies, you know, and I did, I did, I did Isidingo, I did Sivindalan, I did Scandal, I did, oh, I did about four or five different soapies, I've been in most of them. And I did theatre, and I've, I've written movies, and acted in movies, and, you know, um, and I love this industry, I love this industry, it's a gift I believe God gave me. You, you, to how, use. You, how do you feel when you're on set acting? Because there's something that happens to a man when he's, he's gifted. Yes. How, what, what happens to you? How, no, no, how I love do you it. feel? I love it. You know, we, we have a saying, a friend of mine and I have a saying, it beats work. <laughs> <laughs> what we do, like this, Enjoy you know, <laughs> this beats work. The cameramen are working, we have having fun. <laughs> <laughs> of you all know. the characters you've had, yeah. Yeah. which one would you say is dearest to your heart? Like, oh, uh, yeah. if you look at, I mean, there's so many of them, but yes. there are a few that would be special to you. Which of your characters are closest well, to your heart and why? I am still known today, even mm. after the show is closed. Mm. The show is closed last year, and I was on the show for 12 years. Sivan Delan, mm. Mr. Menkis, you know, I can go anywhere in this country. People go, yeah, hey, Mr. Menkis. <laughs> All races, so, everywhere. Second identity. You know, yep. I'm even known as Pastor Menkes <laughs> in some churches. <laughs> so that one, that one is the most famous one, you know. And I enjoyed working with the people on that show. Mm. We became like family. Twelve years, every yeah, day you're together. It's a long, long time. You know. Um, and woman, it's more than what people see on the screen. It's also the relationships that are behind yes, the scenes. Yes, You become lifelong friends and mm. family. You know, mm. it stays with you mm. forever. Now, you were born again, Christian. We've started by talking about how on fire for Jesus mm. you are. And then you find yourself in a secular setting where you're representing mm. different things. Mm. And there is among Christians who are in the arts who say, if, you ha if you're acting, you've got to act Christian things. Yeah. Um, yeah. Being Christian movies, uh, being Christians. Yes. And others say, uh, you know, uh, mm. the, you, you know the argument. So yes. What, yes. What has God taught you? What has God taught you about, about this mm. kind of uh, arguments as mm. well as understanding Christi uh, kingdom principles in this setting? Yes. What has God taught you over the years? God has taught me to be salt and light wherever I go. How does that work out? You know, so when I come onto a set, I would like people to enjoy being around me. I'm not difficult. I'm joyful. I bring the light and the joy of the Lord into a set, you know? You know, I did a movie last year where I directed. Mm -hmm. My wife and I produced and directed a movie. And every day we prayed. And people were confused. Like, we just prayed before this yeah, program. Yeah, yeah. No, no, it's professional like, movie set. No one prays. 
the guy who went, what's this? <laughs> By week two, they were going, oh, can I share scripture? Can wow, I share scripture? Wow, you know, wow. you are salt and light wow. where you are going. You bring that flavor yes. out of people. Yes, people say to me, oh, you um, you only play good guys. I say, no, I play the bad guys. Bad guys. But I don't, I want th- a big thing for me is using the Lord's name in vain. So tell me about that. I had, I've had several actors. Yeah. You know, Muzin Tabela. Yes. You know, even Nigerian actors. I've had several yes. here. And I always ask them this question. What are some characters you will never play? Or what are some scripts that you would say? What makes you, what do you look for in a script? What, what are some, you understand what I yes, mean? Yes. You could look at a, they send you a script. Mm, no, sorry. Yeah. Oh, okay, this I would do. Yes. What are some no-no for you for characters and for stories? Well, I think, I think, I think in, in, in anything demonic or very, I never, I don't even watch horror movies. Oh, I don't. <laughs> I don't even watch them. So if you want me to act in a horror movie, I'm going to say no thank you. You know, it's, so I'm, no. not gonna, I'm not going to open that door. We forget we open doors yeah. when we oh, watch these things. You know, so you're also, sensitive to that, yeah. Yes. Also, unnecessary swearing. Okay. I look at that, oh, well, this character okay. swears a lot. If it's here and there, I can yeah. change it. Yes. yes. Especially when they put in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I say, guys, mm. I don't, I'm not going to say that. Yeah. Yes. What do you say to people who are coming in into this platform and you say look and he say look Zain I want to be able to hold my Christian testimony I mm. want to be able to shine for Jesus what is the secret what has helped you have a staying power so that even after almost 40 years you can stand up and say I follow Jesus and people are, can look and say yeah I know that guy is true I work with him yeah. what is what are the what are the principles or what 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 is the secret for me is is as I said earlier what is your base what is your foundation? If the foundation is strong, anything you build on it will be fine. My foundation is my faith. By the way I raise my kids, my marriage, the way they go to school, my children, what work I take on, mm. uh, everything is built on that foundation of my faith. So I don't compromise that. People know. They know, oh no, Zane, Zane's not going to play that part or mm. do this because... because you know, of what it stands for. stands for. It's not that it's fuddy daddy. Yeah. I, I play everything. I play um, bad yeah, guys. Yeah, I play everything. Yeah. It's just that that's a, a level. Yeah, there's a you, line you know, draws. Yeah. So so for me, when 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 and your testimony will speak for you. Yeah. You know, you you how you, you live. How you live. The people go, no, he always that kind of guy. And also, he's a guy who won't come late. Mm. He won't not pitch up. Mm. He'll always be encouraging. He'll always make the. He's part of the team. So people want you on board because they know, you know, he's a team player. He will deliver. He's going to deliver. Oh. He's going to bring the best, you know. Those are things. And, and it only comes with experience, I suppose. You can't come day one and go, people go, okay, I don't know, Jim, but, mm. but after day one, mm. you must have made an impact. Mm. After that first mm. few minutes on set, people mm. must go, it's a guy we can rely on. This is a good guy, you know. So, sure. one, of the, so one of the first things, of course, is that you don't want to keep your faith behind. You carry it. You, yes. you do, you're not ashamed of the gospel. I don't go around throwing it around. Yeah, you don't you, see me walking with the Bible going, hey, guys, repent. Yeah, yeah but, but you, you're not ashamed to say, I can't do that. Absolutely. I, I, you're not, you're not exactly. holding, trying to blend in as much as trying to just represent yes. Christ. I'm in, salt and light. In what you say. I'm going to change the situation. Mm. My light is going to shine forth. I know the scene says this, but I'm going to play it in such a way. You didn't even think of it. Mm. Watch how I play it this way. Mm. You know, just try it this way. And then, and then that for me is the challenge always. Not that I come to change things. Yeah. Sometimes you just go with the flow. Yeah. You know, you mm. need that. It's needed. Yeah. And then there are times that people just go, wow, you've got something different. I don't know what it is, but it's something different. When you look back, what are some, uh, I mean, you've had accolades, you've had so many experiences. Yeah. What are some for you that stands out, even as we land this interview, what are some of the real highlights in your acting career over the years? The people. The people. Always the people. Okay. You can say I worked on this movie. This movie won so many awards and mm. I won awards, you mm. know. And, 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 but the awards are for my achievement. But it never speaks of the relationship we had. Mm. You know, that for me is every time I look back on a good play I did or a good movie mm. I did, mm. it's about the people that mm. the friends mm. I made. You know, the people who affected me and who I affected. Mm. That for me is why we are called. After all, it's part mm. of the commission, you know. Mm. Go and make disciples of mm. all nations. So for me, that's the important thing, how people affect us and how we affect them. What do you see that God is doing now as we 
as we learn this, what do you sense God is doing in South Africa, in the continent, in terms of the shifts he's bringing? Well, South Africa and Africa is part of the end time revival. You know there's a prophecy mm -hmm. that South Africa, the flame will start at the southern tip of Africa. The end time revival. Mm -hmm. It will start at the southern tip of Africa, spread through Africa, and then to the rest of the world. So this continent we are on has got a redemptive purpose. It's not going to start in America, the end time mm. revival. Not in Singapore, mm. or Japan, or mm. Russia. It's going to start in Africa. Mm. God is releasing his sons and daughters to be able to take the end time message mm. to the rest of the world. Mm. And you know, think the world, the way mm. the world is going. Mm. The way the world is going, mm. you know what's happening. You know? mm. I believe God is beginning to reveal mm. and unpack and unpackage mm. the mm. gift. And the gift is, is in this nation, in South Africa. And it's going to take the whole of Africa with it before it goes to the rest of the world. Mm. So we as Africans, as the first people of this mm. planet, literally mm. we believe Eden was somewhere mm. in Africa, mm. are going to be the people that takes the gospel also to the rest of the world. A new, a, a, a wonderful gospel, an mm. end time revival mm. gospel. Yeah. Zed, it's been so wonderful talking to you just to yeah. see the journey you've gone through mm. over four decades and the powerful impact you're having through fatherhood. We'll still have that on the screen so that people can contact you on that. What's your last word as we land this? For men, I want to say don't underestimate your importance, men. Whether you're a good father or not, don't underestimate your importance. There's a young boy that needs to know that you are proud of him. There's a young girl that needs to know you love her and that you esteem her. And there's a woman who is waiting for you to take your place this, so that she can support you. You know, God is for family. God, a family isn't some social construct. God mm. brought the family, family. the first family. institution. Yes. I mean, the first. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, mm. He Himself, three in one. Family. So, if we restore the man to his rightful place in the home, the home first, not church, not business, don't become a great provider, be a present father, mm. then I will see that God will move and we will change society, homes will change, families will change, and we'll see this country, especially South Africa, become a, just a different different nation because men have stepped up and taken their place. Thank you so much. We've been talking to Zane Mez, and he's a very popular actor here in South Africa, and of course around the world because many people watch you on Netflix and the yeah, rest. Yeah. And uh, he's also a producer of films and uh, more importantly, the CEO of Fatherhood Foundation. Uh, his call and his mandate to redeem the place of the fathers. Thank you so much, Zane. And uh, we've just been blessed having you. Looking forward to talking with you and your wife. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Chum. It's a really great chat. Thank you for joining us this week. I'll see you later. Bye for now. Please like this video and leave a comment below. Let's know what you think. And don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell button and share this video with somebody.